Let's head closer. Oh, God. Why is it asking me these <laughs> things in the middle of a live? <laughs> <laughs> it's so crazy. Oh, my God. Are, are we live? Yeah. I think we are. Okay. We're on. I don't have my, my eyes on. So, guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Nelson. I'm Josh from the Orchid Den. And today we have a special treat on our, this is our third, our third anniversary live. <laughs> it's our third episode doing a live. And we've been focusing more on education, which I'm really loving because we're both uh, education buffs. And Josh decided, what if we do a live pollination? So it'd be really cool to show the viewers live how you pollinate a flower. And then he's the specialist in that. So I'm gonna let him do all the explaining as he's doing it. When the time comes, I will turn on the, I will go behind the camera and film him. So that way we can capture everything so you guys can see it up close. And it'll be better camera captions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we'll we'll show you the nitty gritty, hey mercy, um, of everything. On. So basically what we'll start with it, are the parts of an orchid flower. Um, and so Nelson gracious, graciously donated. Hey, Marcella, ho, hey, Hosanna. So you have- Hosanna, boa noite. The orchid flower, and I'll use this. So you have your your sepals. You have your dorsal sepals and your lateral sepals. Your two petals. Your lip or your labellum. This is where we get the labia from, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this right here is the column which has the, the anther cap. And on the bottom, I'm actually going to take the lip off. So there's your lip. And on the bottom here, you have right behind here is a stigmatic surface. And it's kind of ooey gooey. And that's where the pollen actually goes. And then the pollen tra travels through the column into the ovule and ovary, and this is where your seed pod will form. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, so this That's is so cool. this is this is the little the baby belly, and um, once you do that, in about six months, you'll have a big old seed pod. Which how many how many uh, seeds you? Do they say more or less? Oh, in, gosh. Like in a philonopsis, like that one. A, a, a in every or... seed pod, there's thousands upon thousands of seed. Oh, wow. And so I've got some photos. And so you'll get a seed pod like this. Oh, the ring light. There yeah, you go. There we go. A seed pod <laughs> like this. And then you can see hundreds of I mean, it's almost like dust. So when you have a seed pod there, it's about the size of your thumb. Some, some in the Cattleyas are a lot bigger, um, but you'll have hundreds of seeds. And so when you pour it in your hand and you blow on it, it looks like dust. I mean, they're very, very minuscule. And here's the cool thing. Wow, that's so cool. That is, this is seed magnified 40 times. And the really cool thing is you can see all those little tiny green yellowish dots on here. Those are the, actually the embryos of the orchid seed. And so they're wrapped up in like a papery sheath. Could you make it bigger? Oh, that's oh, my baby's messaging me. Um, there. There we go. Yeah, they can really see. So you can really see like the papery sheath. There's a little embryo. It's a papery sheath. So orchid seed don't have, like regular seed, have that endosperm full of sugar and mm -hmm. nutrients to help them start germinating. Orchid seed do not have that endosperm. It's a raw embryo wrapped in that papery sheath, like a little taco, like an embryo taco. An embryo taco. <laughs> <laughs> a burrito. And, yeah. And, um, and so that's why we have to take our seed pods and sew them in sterile flasks with nutrient rich jelly and oh, I get basically, that now. Yeah, those... basically like it's a it's a petri uh, petri dish mm. so they're petri babies P okay. petri dish babies um, and then they'll germinate 
science. Yeah, and it's it's it is, and so here's a sample of a flask, and you can see all the nutrient rich agar. Um, this has like a lot of times people will put like banana um, and sugars, and it's black because of charcoal to help filter out the impurities okay. and stuff, and then it's. It's put so, in, so it has like the nitrogen, potassium, and all yes. those good and all and lots of macronutrients as well. Um, and the pH is really important. So you really want to have that pH like five point eight. Real acidic. Not real acidic, but yes, more acidic than alkaline. Okay. If it's alkaline, you probably won't get seed germination. Okay. And alkaline would be like what seven. Seven is neutral. Right, it's right. So right in the middle. above seven, seven above. is, yeah, is alkaline. Yeah, because our water here is so, so, so alkaline. Yeah. We got to put lots of salt. So, um, so there, it's very scientific. If you don't know what you're doing, then it's really, it's, it's not worth it unless you've really educated yourself. And there's lots of good, edu like, books out there, um, even online and stuff like that. So... Um, if you are interested in hybridizing, I recommend like starting with one particular genus. And a good thing that I recommend always is go on like orchidroots.com. Like you can, that, that you can site. search that site mm -hmm. and you, you can actually pull up their progeny of that single plant. Yeah. Like all the parents. Yeah. Every single like mother, grandmother, great grandmother, great, great, great. It just goes and we we call it the rabbit hole. Yeah. And then you can see what hybrids have already been made using that. You can see how it influences like shape of the flower, color of the flower, size of the plant, everything. And um, cheers, guys. It's so, so rude. I'm here like drinking, <laughs> not even cheering. Cheers. cheers. Um, so it's it's really, really cool. And and I I'll go on there, you know, you scroll while you're waking up in the morning and whatever. Kelly. Hey, hey. I got through Kelly. By the way, I was I was explaining to Kelly a little a minute ago. I was sending her a message, and I was as we were talking earlier, and I was like, "It's been a day, right, to get to this point." And this is why we started so late because the traffic today was out of this world. But not only that, we had technical difficulties. Technical too. difficulties. Not on our part. No, no. It's just YouTube wouldn't connect. Everything was. I was like, "What is going on? Why can't we connect?" So finally, why no you more? <laughs> Love you. I was like, that's Portuguese. I couldn't even see that's the name my from honey. here. I know, I can see. Oh, he's in love. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Speaking of love, we're going to do some orchid love. Oh, yeah. Um, mm. So I did bring um, two flowers. And so I always recommend, uh, we'll, and we'll talk about, at, when I'm hybridizing personally, I'm always looking at, okay, how is this going to better the next generation of these two parents you know these if if i pick these two parents is it gonna improve the flower shape is it going to bring in more color is it going to dwarf the plant to where it's more marketable and more compact because a lot of the antelope dendribiums Look i at love the people we're gonna get reprimanded yeah. <laughs> um, last time we were talking to each other blanca <laughs> reprimanded <laughs> and we're doing yeah, it again i know right um, and so I'm looking at, like with the antelopes, I'm looking at how can I take a six foot tall plant with like an eight inch tall plant and help dwarf the size because not everybody can grow that 12 foot tall plant. Right. I'm trying to remember how we got the comments. You remember it, no? Yep. Was it in a corner? There we go. Oh, no. Today's topic is orchid porn. Orchid <laughs> porn. <laughs> we call it orchid porn. We're going to uh, pollinate orchid flower. Yep, we're talking about hybridizing, what we look for when we're hybridizing. Um, and then we'll go into some other different like tangents and topics um, off of that. But um, so I'm looking for like with this particular pollination we're doing tonight. Um, one is the camping sand and white, which is an oncidium. This is an I call it the popcorn oncidium that I have yeah. on a, you guys have seen it here in my greenhouse. 
that this eventually turns white and it looks like a yeah. popcorn. So you can see how they open up with the yellow and the lip and then they turn like a creamy white. Um, and so this is an Oncidium crossed with a Tolumnia and none of these have been hybridized before. And so I was like, ooh, when I saw the flower and I actually had someone message me when they saw your video and they're like, oh my gosh, do you have this for sale? And I found some and of course I, I sold one, but I kept one for myself because I really want to add in some color to it. So this is a really, really cool. Um, this is Drock Firm, Big Bang. And so I think my ideal on this is one, we're going to add and bring in some color to this kind of regular whitish brownish plant. Um, and two, it'll probably dwarf it even a little bit more, but still be a vigorous grower because it has that strong Oncidium um, background. Whereas People it, like this one. Yeah. Yeah. This, it is really pretty. This is really cute. Yeah, bring it closer. See if it comes out focused. Yeah. It's really pretty. And I like the, the color combination, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Cranberry and yellow. Yeah. Hi, Linda. And so, <clears throat> um, so that's what I'm looking for. When I'm hybridizing, I'm looking for color, plant size or shape of flower and so a lot of times what you'll see is you'll see on your tags uh that it's ludomaniana by self right we're yes, getting very we're, scientific <laughs> yeah we're getting this is we'll we'll call this more of an uh this is a serious episode intermediate yeah level. this is not the i'm trying not to be goofy because this is very serious and i know i can be um especially after this <laughs> But um, so so we'll see we'll see how this how this does, and of course um, so from uh, once I pollinate this, it'll take six like up, up to six months for the seed pod to form. Okay. Or about usually about five months in, I'll send it off to my friend who does all my flasking for me. Um, I have done my flasking in the past, but all the pottery equipment kind of took over. Mm. So I send it out now. And, um, and then about six months to a year later, I'll get some flasks back. And then it'll be ready to unflask. To see the babies form. To, right? <laughs> yeah. And then, and then be able to like, you know, grow them. And then each flower, just like, me and my brothers don't all look the same, even though we have the same parents. Uh, we all have slight variations. Oh, goodness. Ice is popping. Ice is popping <laughs> hot. It's warming up in here. I know what's going on. <laughs> that, orchid whis that, orchid whiskey, love. that whiskey's on fire. <laughs> uh, and so you'll have slight variations of color. You'll have slight variations of uh, plant growth because these are kind of significantly different in, in yeah, size. That's what I like that you pick two yeah. different completely different scales. And um it's probably gonna be more like a compacted one. Right? Yeah, I, I and that, that's what I'm shooting for. I'm shooting for something in between. So something, you know like a Neil stylus. Eight eight inch type of with multiple grows, multiple uh branching flower spikes that last a long time with some color on it. That's gonna be so cool. I think I think it would be super cool. Um and we're going to, I'm going to continue like updating through the channel, the whole process of this. Yeah. Yeah. But the cool thing is that this particular plant, this particular hybrid has never been used in making a hybrid before. So this will be its first hybrid ever made in the whole world. As uh, long as uh, someone else says, has not used it. It's on video. Um, Doesn't matter. <laughs> proof is in the pudding. Proof is in YouTube. Um, <laughs> So, so, so I think I think it'll be really cool. Is this a name over here? No, you just you yeah. Only, is that, is yeah. that it? Yeah, that's yes, that's the campings. I I think this it's not spelled correctly. Yeah, I was gonna say because I don't I got my tag somewhere, but it's yeah. in the in the thing. But I like that that's just a shorter name because my tag is like it gives you the whole history of the plant in one tag. 
I yeah. have, I, if I showed you, it's like, oh, yeah. and, I, and I think C was the one from Sierra Madre. But that's I think the, he's the one that hand wrote it. That's the cool thing about orchidroots.com. So you can actually go on like Orchid Roots and go up here and search. And so this is what I searched for. There's the name. It'll show you the two parents. If you click here, can I get it? You can see there's no progeny. So there's no registered hybrids with it yet. Now, maybe in another year, someone might have already used it and they're further in the process than, I, than we are. And so, so that's but, a great way then to find out. Yeah. And, and then you can, it. and then you can scroll down and you can see the two parents, what makes up the parents and see all the ancestral um, species that make up this particular one plant. So this is really good uh, information when you're trying to look and see, okay, does the, will, if I take this parent and this parent and cross them, which one's gonna be more dominant in flower color, which one's gonna be more dominant in plant size. And then you can kind of get an idea of like, okay, if I, if I cross these two together, then I'm, I'm going to end up with something like this, or at least plan it out that way. Now to that pod, whatever you do now, mm -hmm. how is how is the appearance divided? Because when I used to breed fish, when you get, uh, let's say, this hybrid and this hybrid, and you cross them together, mm -hmm. it goes back to the wild, to the wild look of it, right? But with plants, it doesn't really. It continues crossing, right? Like with angelfish, when you yeah. cross like new hybrids that they have now, yeah. it goes back to the stripe, like the ones that I have, the striped wild ones. Uh -huh. So 50% of the eggs, when they put the eggs, 50% yep. are wild and 50% are the new hybrid color. Is it the same with orchids or do they all come out pretty much in the same? They, type of they all come out pretty much the same, but you have like variations. Variations. Now, now we could get like, out of, because red, is not real like yellow is not a dominant trait so you can take two yellows cross them together and you'll end up with a red with a red right because which is really 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 different that happens with, um, with hair color <laughs> yeah That's why i know that and so um so it's it's really a, you'll have fluctuations but you kind of go with the flow yeah because that's and what like the find... bent fragrance when you see them yeah there's variations but they're pretty much all the same when you start looking at them they kind of all have that same look yeah yep so that's what's going to happen here that's what will happen here because we're growing from seed now what we'll do what i'll do after i get the seed back and i flower them this is a four to five year process guys by the way until we actually see a flower um i'll take the best of the best so I'm, that means i have to have the channel yeah running we, for four or five years we're committed guys <laughs> just for you <laughs> Are you guys willing to stick around for four, yeah. four or five years more of, yeah. of us? And then what we'll do is we'll hopefully get like a, a nice American Orchid Society award. And then we'll take the, the best of the best and clone it. And then those will all be identical. So I'm on board. What did it say that? I can't Yes, see Melissa, he is a hairdresser, yeah. <laughs> a hairstylist. And Mer, uh, Mar Mercy... Yes, you can pay to have an orchid named after you. Usually, you have to um, find someone with an un unregistered orchid, and it already has to be blooming. Uh, I know a lot of people are naming orchids while the seed pod is still forming, and I'm like, you don't know what's going I'm, I'm really against, even... I'm really against that because you don't even know if the seed is going to be viable or you don't even know in the next two years even after it comes out of flask you, you might lose a whole the whole flask yeah so I'm a, I'm a big There's advocate no for you know at least having it to near blooming size before naming but I'm even more of an advocate of you got to have a, a flower a, flower, a photo you, of the flower yeah. before yeah, you register. Yeah, you know anyway. Yeah, and most of the time that is required, but I know in cer certain circumstances that um, people have registered them like prematurely. Good, we're up to 38, 37. Well, somebody left. 
Sorry, but guys. You're going to miss it because now is when the good part really comes. <laughs> Let me see. Um, usually, you, mother plant, father plant, I'll usually do a reciprocal cross, which means take pollen from one, put it on one, take pollen from the other, and put it on the other. And, um, and then that way you have a higher chance. Um, I always try to have the mother plant really strong. And so I'm probably going to only put the telumnia pollen on the uh, this. Um, it's more of an oncidium, the campaign. Right. Campaign's in so, white. Uh, are you guys ready to see this demo? Yep, let's see if we have any more questions. Sandy on hey, West Palm Beach. Hey, Sandy. And Teresita says she will, she will, uh, Continue watching until her dying day or something like that. That's so funny. As long as yes. I still, I'm still alive. Yes. Sorry, we're scrolling through since we've been. Um, yeah. Now, now that we can figure this out. Can you? Uh, yes. This will be a hybrid of a hybrid because these are both two hybrids, and most of the orchids that you buy today are hybrids. That's why if you go on orchid roots, you'll see how some of the lineage, like one that freaked me out was. Um, the Francis Fox. Yeah. How many it has. And, and you know what? I almost brought a gold digger, but then I started looking at all the progeny, like uh, uh, of gold digger. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and one of one of my favorites, Jackie Bright, mm. is a gold digger hybrid. Yes. yes. Um, but I and you can and so that just goes to show you can have a really good flower and make it better. Right. Or at least make a really nice flower from it. Um, and you can take two crappy flowers and make a really nice flower from it, you know? I we still get beautiful people from two ugly people. When are we going to see this happen? <laughs> right like a little now. So I'm going to show you guys um, how we do it with my sample flower. I've taken off the labellum. Um, Put my do you want... back on. I, do you want me to change yeah, yeah. the camera around? Yeah, yeah. so yeah. It... Nelson's going to grab the camera. And Bye. I am going to actually, you know, no, that's fine. That's that good. good? Yeah. I'm going to make this a little brighter. Yes. Only because, where is it? It's on your left hand on the bottom. There, there you is. go. Ooh. I know. Blue eyes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hold on, I gotta there turn it go. around. Now they're gonna see only moi. <laughs> Let me see how you turn this around. Right here, right? There we go. Yep. All right, you wanna come sit right here and then I can <laughs> kind of. Oh yeah, this is way better. All right, so this right here is the anther cap. And this holds in the pollen of the flower. So which is the male part of the flower. Flowers are basically the reproductive system of the plant. Um, and that's what we enjoy so much. So um, this down underneath is the stigmatic surface and it's kind of sticky. Um, this one's kind of dried out, but we'll have. That's so usually what I try to do is I try to get um, this, a little bit of stigmatic surface on my, you can use a toothpick, you can use a freshly sharpened pencil, um, and so what I'll do is when you flip off the anther cap, you can see the pollen in there. And the pollen will usually stick directly to your... And so we'll remove this, this anther cap. It loses a little bit the um, focus because it's so tiny. Yeah. It wants to focus. There you go. When you put your hand behind it, it focuses. So there's the pollen. And it looks like male reproductive system. It does. You're right. Mm -hmm. And so then, hold on. Let me let me make sure it focuses because if not, they're not going to get it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to scoot back a little bit. But basically, there we go. You just take the pollen, and it's really cool because there's like a notch right here, so I can kind of just take that pollen and kind of make sure it's in there and then shove it into that stigmatic surface 
and then that's basically how you pollinate a flower. Now, this flower <laughs> needs to be attached to the plant, otherwise right. you're not going to get pollination. But this is just our sample flower, so we can get a really good close up for you guys um, and everything. So now what we'll do is, and I'm not sure if you'll be able to focus on this. Oh uh, yeah. Let me see, because it is small. This as long is as you a keep it, if you, if you keep it close to the wood, yeah, it will focus. And so what we'll do is, and these flowers just open this week. A lot of times with the small stuff, you'll get. Oh, I can't see it on there. It's Ooh, so tiny, 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 tiny. And so then, I'll, don't drop it. <laughs> yeah, and that was the anther cap. And now I'm just gonna hold this in my lap so we can try and... So what I'll do is I will take one of the lower flowers because it's the older on, flower. on the stem, eh, you have all these nutrients being pumped and water being pumped up to these. So if you try to put a seed pod up to a flower up top at the end, it's, when this stem starts to go back and die, then you're gonna because this is gonna have to last six months so i always try to go with one of the like oh, first flowers and that also you want to make sure it's a mature flower so five to 15 days old so five to 15 days old is the time frame you're shooting for to make sure that the flower is open that it's that is accepting that it's not too old just like we can't have children when we're like really old flowers <laughs> kind of flowers flower. need to be mature and and full of vigor and everything else i and love these mm -hmm. they're so pretty and so it focuses very well as long as you keep your hand like that because it focuses on your hand but it takes and so i've got the pollen it's really hard to do with a big old bright light in your face too i know we're and committed so to this. It's basically up in there. I'll take this pollen off. Oh, because there's one there, right? You yep. forget about the other one that. And I just discard that. And so I want to make sure that this guy is good on here. I can fill the stigmatic surface on there. And then what I'll do is I'll take one more and we'll do another. Um, to reassure that. Yeah. And if we get two seed pods, then. So be it. that's fine. I'll I'll probably pinch one off as long as they're both kind of um, growing in in the sa at the same rate. Um, that way, I'm not stressing out the plant because you do stress out the plants when they're forming seed, um, and using that's why up a lot of energy you're using up a lot of energy and a lot of. That's why I say you need to have a healthy plant. Um, in order to have appropriate seed, because then you might it might abort um, and not create seed inside. It might ab abort. Um, Are we doing this again? Oh, po pollination. Put it towards the light because it's so dark in there. there no, we go. it's so. Let me see. I don't know if we're connected. It keeps going in and out, guys. The connection. So we're farming some procedure here that cannot wait. So that was the pollen, the that, old one? That, yeah, that was the pollen off of this flower. I'm not doing a reciprocal cross. I'm just putting pollen from the Jurok firm on here. And it's stuck. And that's right. basically it. And so what I'll do now or tomorrow, um, because then I have the supplies, I will make a tag that says um, Tulumnia I, which is the father, by Camping San White, which is the mother, because we took the, the father is always first in progeny because we took the pollen and then we put it on the female. So um, it'll be, that'll be the, the order of the names on that. Yay. And um, so in another six months or even monthly, we can do updates, you know, and um, we'll kind of tag along and then we'll kind of give updates and then 
and we'll kind of bring you guys on for the journey. And then also when I get some of my hybrids that I did last year back starting in around maybe around June, I'll have to check with them. And um, then I'll kind of, we'll take this to a, another level on, okay, now what do I do now that I have a flask or if I want to buy flasks, how do I take these babies out of flask and grow them to blooming flowers? So we'll kind of like go through the whole process of, of babies to, you know, to, from seed to flask to unflasking to maybe either compot or individual um, is, is personal preference to growing them to full flower. So cool. let's, um, are we done? No, we're not done. Oh, okay. But I want, <laughs> I, I want to like, get, I want you I to put, put it back here and then we can yeah? just sit back and, and talk right. some more. All right. There we go. Hey, <laughs> this is all live and unedited. You guys are used to yeah. my vid my videos being so edited. I got to be careful because this thing keeps slipping off. There you go. And You're good. I, yeah. I kept on going, uh, the uh, YouTube kept on going in and out and saying, trying to reconnect. Can you guys see us? I mean, it says live there. I don't. Yeah. Let me turn. This Someone on. give us a thumbs up. Um, Mercy. Yes, the flowers are the reproductive system of the plant. Usually, it really depends on, thanks guys, it usually depends uh, the cost of flasking and sending out seed and, and stuff like that. Some places will only, okay, yeah, thanks, Teresita. Some places will only do green pods. Some people prefer dry seed or green pods. I prefer to send it out when it's green pod because then it's, a lot less work for sterilizing uh, aseptic techniques. It's going in and out. Yeah, sorry guys, that's beyond our control. Yeah. Um, but sometimes it's twenty dollars just just to sow the seed, and then for replating. You can hear now. Perfect. Okay. For replating, then it's another cost, and then they charge you for the the final flask. So you can easily spend up to six, 40 to $60 per flask. Um, but then you get, you know, seedlings. And then if you grow all your seedlings out, then. then uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's probably the, the signal here. Cause we're out in, we're out in the greenhouse. We're not inside my house. If we were inside my house, the reception would probably be a lot better. So green, green, Green pod mercy is when the pod before the pod is opened. Now you can see this is a little yellow and you can see a split there. So this would not be considered a green pod. This would be um, contaminated seed. And so then you have to go through the process of washing the seed and sterilizing it before you put it into the flask. Because if you don't do that, then you have you'll have fungal spores, and that will take over all your seeds, and the fungus will grow over in your sterile petri dishes, flasks, um, before the seed gets a fungus chance to is germinate. Always, yeah, somewhere. Always You're making your life always, miserable. always, and that's why like laboratory equipment or sterile equipment is always important. Good, yeah, Tanya. Um, and thanks for pointing that out. So some genera, like catacetums, um, and, and, the, and their intergeneric genera have, will produce male flowers and female flowers. Um, that's one of the few genera that actually has male flowers and female flowers. But most orchid flowers are both hermaphrodites that have male and female parts on them. And so it's really easy to just take pollen from one flower, put it on another part of the flower. If we offer seedlings to- uh... Yeah, in about five years. <laughs> That's when a seedling <laughs> is, 
Uh, maybe the, maybe three years. Three years. Yeah, maybe three years. Three years. Three years. It's a good seedling. Yeah, be a good seedling, and they'll be small seedlings. So, and they'll be good to mount on my lily pads or my branch mounts. Oh, um, I want to show you. I want to show them stuff. too. My lily pad. I don't know why, but you know that. Oh, you can't see it, but in the middle, you see uh -huh. the wood. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I got some type of wood rot. I thought it was termite. Thank oh, God it's not yeah. that. I'd rather it be uh, wood rot. So I had to take everything that was in the center out because it was pulling everything from the center. Oh, goodness. Yeah. So I wanted to do a little show and tell. Well, you can always just brace it and just do uh, what we call a, well, a sister guys, rector. We haven't, even, we haven't even focused on this beautiful background. I, I didn't read that. Yeah, subscribe so then people have a chance to see conception and then have flowers. Exactly. Yeah. You love the background? Thank you. Yes, it's a long yeah. process. Um, it teaches you patience. Yes. So basically, any flowering orchid that you see or that you buy, I know a lot of people are like, how old is this plant? It's over five years old. If it's blooming, Absolutely, it's yeah. usually over five years old. Yeah, I always say that if you once you any orchid you have that's bloomed, I guarantee you is over five years old. Now, people, um, I get this question a lot. What do I do if I see a seed pod? I see a seed. I found a seed pod on one of my epidendrums or one of my orchids I have in my greenhouse or my back patio. Trash it. Cut it off and trash it because you don't know, one, it's been wildly pollinated. If you didn't make that specific cross, then um, it's really not worth your while because you don't know exactly what two parents are to where then you can register it in the long run. Now, if you wanna go through all that time and trouble and find someone to flask it for you or send it to a inspiring flasker, that wants to practice, that would be great. But I always tell people, cut it off, um, you know, and then try your hand at, you know, crossing two yeah. parents. I think I think it's super fun. Or you don't, you'll never know what you'll get until you try. Yeah, you gotta yeah. do it. You gotta jump and do it. Yep. I mean, for me, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Honestly, five years back, if you would have told me I'd be sitting here doing a youtube about orchids let alone pollinating flowers i would have told you you're crazy yeah so you just got to do it you don't be afraid of it you know you i've killed a lot of orchids to get to learn just how yeah. to grow these a philanopsis but you but even to, even though if we if an orchid doesn't survive under our care we don't kill orchids we don't um they just don't survive under we always care. we always learn something from it um, and I've learned a lot just trying to, that's the only way you learn trying to, you know, I get a $5 half dead plant and try to bring it back to life where I'll mix up a concoction and test stuff on it <laughs> and, you know, play mad scientist. Um, there are, so basically, yes. So the question was, are there some, some work you can't cross? And, and yes, so I can't take a, like a Oncidium and cross it with a Dendrobium or a Cattleya with a Vanda. They need to be- Structurally similar, right? Similar and intergeneric. Um, but there's even like, you know, there's so many subspecies of Dendrobiums and even some of the like Latori type Dendrobiums won't cross with um, like the spatulata section. So even some of the, the same, same genus? genera, some of the same genus won't cross together. That's crazy. Yeah. I love orchids. They're just so prehistoric and so yeah. mysterious. Yeah. All right, guys. So thank you so much. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, Abrupt finish. So basically what I'll do tomorrow, I'll, I'll put, I'll write a tag and I'll put today's date on it and I'll hang it on the flat, on the flowers that I pollinated. So then I have a, a constant reminder, plus I'll write it in my hybridizing book and um, make note of the cross, when I made the cross um, and stuff like that. That way I know in about 
four to five months, it's ready to be cut off and sent out to the laboratory. And when I send it out to the laboratory, I give them a special, I basically just give them the genus. That's it? And then they just take it from with, there? And with, with a number on there. Um, I love science. And so, be, so because it's proprietal, you know, information. Wow, that's a lot. Guys, when you send us a message, keep in mind that it only stays up for a few seconds. So if you send us something that's really long, we can't read it. We have to actually stop to read it. <laughs> so kind of like you can ask a question, but just kind of break it up. So how many have you crossed successfully? The, the bat plant? I'm looking for bat flowers. No, we're talking about orchids here. Sorry, Christina. Um, but we'll keep an eye out for you. The one, what, what does this one say? Hold on. How do you do that? Oh. <laughs> like that. Okay. How many have I've, you crossed I've, successfully? I've probably done like a dozen crosses so far. Um, some have, some were not, the seed was not viable. Some um, are still waiting in flask because it's, it's, you know, about a year to a year and a half in flask. And so it's a long process. And so that's why I'm excited to start getting some of my flasks back this year, like thing, it, probably in the middle of the year. The thing is with orchids, I am not very patient, right? I'm, I'm a very, in, I have to have instinct gratification <laughs> and I'm very hyper. We were just talking about yeah. this. I'm very hyper. So everything has to be fast. So the reason I love orchids is because they slow me down. It makes me like, okay, you're going to have to wait for this process to happen. <laughs> it's not going to bloom when you want me to bloom. It's yeah. going to bloom in its due time. And there are certain things that you have to do for it to get there. So it teaches you discipline. Mm -hmm. It teaches you to organize yourself. It teaches you a lot of patience. And it teaches you gratitude. Because when you get yeah. that beautiful flower, you just feel so good and so validated that you... You went through this whole process. You had the patience to do it. And now here is like your reward. Yeah. And, and so when you, when you go to that next level, I would say, or next step would mm -hmm. be flasking. So mm -hmm. that's another level of patience. So if you kind of look at the symbiotic relationship between the person and the, and the plant, mm -hmm. it's almost like the plant is teaching you something. Oh, yeah. At least. Well, and I always tell everybody, listen, we are growing orchids. The flowers are just our short period of time frame uh, and our reward. So I tell everybody orchid growing is a pyramid scheme, right? So we focus on root growth, right? Which is number one, because if you're gonna, if you have good roots, then the second level is great plants. Mm -hmm. And if you focus on root growth and you have great plants, then you're gonna have really good flowers. So I say the orchid growing is, is we're basically, growing plants and the flowers are our reward yeah and it and it also teaches you to pay attention to the to the details because even though we're not watering every day most you know like our cattleyas dendrobiums oncidiums and stuff um you can still pay attention and, and grace your plants with your shadow your shadow is the best gift you can give your orchids why is that because then, because then you are paying attention to oh, your plant oh, okay. every day. I'm sorry. I, I see, like shadowing. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I always say spend time with your orchids. Yeah. Because that's what it's I do the all the time. I'm, I'm always out here. Yeah. And I'm always like, you know what I thought you were talking about? Because I, I was trying to read what of your left there. And at the same time I was reading, you were saying, I'm like, you have to shadow your orchid. Like I'm thinking about lighting. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that's a new that's technique. a new culture technique. How, wow, that's really committed <laughs> to your orchid. <laughs> but um, but yeah, you know, if you're paying attention to what your plant's doing, are you getting you know new root growth? Are you getting a new leaf growth, which is plant growth? Are you uh, looking in there to to see do, do I have any kind of insects? And did this leaf have this brown spot on it yesterday? Um, and, and a lot of times, if you do have a brown spot, go ahead and circle it with a Sharpie marker. You're not going to hurt the plant tissue. And then you, then you know if, the, if it's growing or not. Um, but I always recommend being proactive. Use a good systemic fungicide. and, and use, Explain use, what systemic is, because I was talking with Kelly about this the other day. So, uh, so 
I always explain a systemic fungicide or a systemic insecticide gets into the system of the plant. Um, it's not topical. The plant tissue actually absorbs this, these chemicals and uses it to prevent any kind of um, that fungal infection or insect in, in, infestation. Um, so there's a big difference between like, and that's, I always tell people, Australia, what's up? I always tell people like the difference between topical and systemic is like getting a, like a pill a, versus a cream. Somebody uh, just yeah, put that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I always, always say getting the flu shot compared to getting treated for like the runny nose. And, right. Right. And Over the counter. <laughs> yeah. Um, afterwards. So a systemic is going to be like the flu shot. It's going to help prevent. Um, whereas in the more topical stuff is, is going to um, treat issues after they've happened. Have you heard of regalia? Mm -mm. It say systemic fungicide organic. Hmm. Cool. And it's pretty pricey from what I hear. Kelly uh, Orchids in Paradise in Hawaii. She has a YouTube channel. And we were talking about that. She just ordered it and she's going to start. She said she's going to try, but they've had like crazy weather like here with the crazy winds and, gotcha. and the rain. So it's not good to do that when it's yeah. guys don't do fungicide. If it's really windy, first of all, you don't want that on you. And number two, when it's raining, because it's like worthless. Yeah, so, it's just going to wash off. Yeah, you, you want really nice... want to spray it early in the morning Super when early. it's dry. Let let all that plant tissue soak it up and have time to absorb it um, in there. So, yeah, we were talking about trying to go a little more organic. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I haven't really been spraying my, my orchids that, like I used to. Yeah. I haven't really... I've been cleaning them with like water and soap if I find, cause I'm always checking. So yeah. when I think that when you, that's, that's key. When you guys spend time with your orchids, at least I give my orchids time every day. Not mm -hmm. everybody has that time, but I, I could be like dead tired and I will walk out here <laughs> to the back and it's not close to the house. And I will spend at least 30 minutes here and I'll look around because every day that you do a little bit, you're bound to come across something that you'll stop before it gets too bad. Yeah. And you can do it with less ab abrasive or, or aggressive uh, chemicals, which is what I've been, because before I wouldn't do that. And now that I spend more time, I'm, I realize, you know, I'm not using chemicals because I'm really cleaning them myself by hand. I'm doing what, what Smiley does. Yeah. Smiley Orchid. She does it all by hand. And I think that's what it is. It's you have to be dedicated to, to your collection. Oh, they're having a conversation. Some people are. Oh no, that's for me. She purchased it. Yeah, that's not bad. Sixty dollars. Yeah, that's, that's not really too bad on Amazon. So you guys can order it if you guys want to try it out. We're not sponsored by it or anything like that, but I heard about it, and if it's organic and it, they say it's really, really good. I've heard really good reviews. It even has, I think, like five stars on Amazon. So, if it's organic and it works, I'd rather opt for that a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, especially if it works. Yes. As Reg long as it works. Regalia, yeah. For all you guys that are watching now, she's um, Kelly just put it on the thing. Hey, Francis. From Trinidad. Hello from Trinidad, my Trini friends. Hi, guys from the New York City. I miss going there. I love New York. Thanks, Ramona. Literally. We'll keep doing them as long as we can, hopefully for an more than five years. Yeah. <laughs> How's New York? How's the weather over there? I'm, I'm dying to go back. I used to go to New York like twice a year. And when I met Lewis, believe it or not, he's lo he's a world traveler. Mm. I haven't been back to New York. I'm like, you love to travel. We've never been to New York together. <laughs> Hawk, how wants to go to New York? Maybe we can plan a trip. Nelson, can you introduce? Oh, you want me to introduce my beautiful blooms? Sure. <laughs> Very quickly, because there's too many to me. I will I start I off with fall. the center stage. You yes. know, you know, I was going to grab this. Yeah. This beauty comes from it's an award winning flower and it comes from Carl Smith. I'm totally obsessed with this right now. I'm going to let you pronounce it. He's pronounces better than I do. This is, I mean, without looking at it, it's Ludomaniana cerulea. He's such a show off. Yeah. You know, I used to say it's <laughs> cerulea. You know what I used to say? Let me see, because now I don't remember, which is crazy that I would say it. Corulia. Eh, kind of, right? Well, instead of cerulea, I would say corulia or 
Corulia, that's how we yep. say Corulia. But this is two awarded Ceruleas into together. one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which is nice. It's and that's a nice flower. And I believe it just got it just got I, an award of merit. I, I, I thought it got uh, an award of quality. Oh, award of quality. You're yes. right. Award of quality. At the Tammy Emmy show, I believe. I love her. So, kudos. Congrats, Frank. Yes, Frank. That was a big achievement. And right when I got it, you know, I, I, I have gotten this. I think, why am I yelling? I have the mic on. I keep thinking that. Mm -hmm. the, hold on. Let me see. What else could I introduce? That path. This one? Yes. The Joyce Hagawaza. Yeah, that's that's nice. That almost reminds me of a, a little bit of the um, Path Delinati eyes. This one is a Joyce Hasegawa. Yeah. I guess you guys can. And know. that's a really nice plant. I got this from it's got Tom. That, that spot, the the tiny little specks on the leaves, um, and it's got really really good. I just like, showed this on What's in Bloom that I just growth. put it up, and I was talking exactly about that about these leaves. Mm -hmm. They're so pretty. Mm -hmm. And I have a mini one of this one. Did you see it? Oh, actually, I took, this chair keeps falling over to that side. I have a tinier don't, one. Don't fall. I know this is all propped here. See, this is cute. A little mini of that you one. Got a little baby. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's fragrant. It's a very soft. Um, yeah. I keep yelling. I keep forgetting to have the mic on. I'm sorry, guys, if I'm yelling. It is, it is a fragrant and it smells um, like a soft floral powdery smell. It's very, mm -hmm. very pretty smell. You've got a lot of Jesse eye. You know what I have? I have yours, the one I got from you. And you got that at and Tamiami, I, right? Yep. And I no, you got that before Tamiami. No, I got no. this at Tamiami. Oh, okay. And it's still open, guys. That's This is why I've been um, selling and trying to get more people on the path bandwagon because they're easy to grow. Just like grow them with your phalaenopsis. I'm trying. <laughs> the table won't let me. <laughs> Hold on. There we go. So this is a Maudier hybrid. Um, it has the spots on the petals and it has some stripes you can see on it, the man. dorsal sepal. Yeah. It's really hard to get. But the color is really nice. And um, I fell in love with it. You had an open one, and, and this one was yeah. just about to open. That one was like, just about to open, but it's been in bloom since what, like the beginning of well, second week of January. The the week that I bought it, yeah, it opened. It started opening. Yeah. So yeah, that one has that one has really stayed in bloom. And the the paths are easy. Grow them like a fowl. Um, one more, and that's it. <laughs> and and they'll and the flowers last a long time, just like the phalaenopsis do as well. All right, I'm going to bring this fowl because this fowl I got. Yeah. I'm trying, and you know, That's, this This is registered. Leaves. I just lost it. I didn't, I never got the tag. Somebody told me it was registered, and they gave me the name, and I looked it up, and absolutely. Look at the look size. Look at the size of this leaf. Holy cow. Here's my hand. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like, really spread out. And I love the color one, of these flowers. Two. So you have like four, four sets of leaves on it, which yeah. is really nice. She's a big mama, and she's that's heavy. a that's that's a beaster. <laughs> that's a beaster. She's really yeah. heavy. So I Very want her to showcase her because she really deserves it. And this, and believe it or not, here's a here's an example, and then we're gonna segue, kind of like segue into another topic. Um, this is an old spike, mm -hmm. and from the tip, hold on, let me see if I sit down. It'll be better. From the tip right here. They right? put out a new inflorescence. That, it put another inflorescence. That's crazy. And look at the size of it. Yeah. And it's giving me another spike here. Yeah. So if you guys don't cut your spikes on your fowls, it may reproduce a whole new like row of, of flowers like that. Yep. Because one of the conversations I was having today, um, nerding out with, with I Kelly. Don't, I don't think that's too fragrant, is it? No, this is not fragrant. Yeah. A lot of the fowl, uh, a lot of the, a lot of your fowls won't be fragrant. I know like some of your species like Bellina and your Ambenensis. Um, I'm sure there's a, a few more of the species are fragrant. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. All right. We're back to normal. So, yeah, that one, that, um, switching. 
That fowl, by the way, I got at uh, a Heavenly Garden right here on Chrome Avenue. And uh, I got it like two years ago, right? Right at the, towards the end of the pandemic. Let me see. We're going back on the comments to see what you guys were saying. Port St. Lucie. I'll be at Port St. Lucie. I sometimes go up that way, but not often. Port St. Lucie in April for their orchid show. Who is this one? I don't know. When you do it, it works. Oh, it's on there. You're just scrolling on the My screen. Show. Okay. I forgot what I was saying something about the... the uh, oh, in Heavenly Garden. So if you, if you guys want that kind of um, fowl, that's the only place I've actually seen that fowl. Really? Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen that anywhere it's else. It's got some Mondo huge leaves on it. Um, that's what gets it for me yeah it's and it's always yeah. had those leaves and, and and it lost a lot of them because it was um when i used to keep them inside my terrace when i didn't know much about orchids mm -hmm. and about lighting and, and they would do well in there but mm -hmm. of course what do you think happens it retains more water yep. because, so i kept on watering so. yeah but now i know exactly the amount and every orchid every section of orchid or genus of orchid you should learn the way that you grow it, the environment, and try to keep them grouped together. Like I've learned that in my quick tent, in my little quick tent, my dendrobiums, which that surprised me, do are doing better in there than out here. My philonopsis and my bulbophyllums, they they're doing great in there, plus the aeroids. Mm -hmm. But now the anosmums do better out here. They do way better hanging down. And well, because the anosmums really like that drop in temperature in order to initiate right. flowering. Right. So, so you, if you guys, you know, you want to get into, because a lot of orchid co collectors, they don't do diverse collecting. They do like specific, like papillopatalums, or they'll do like papillopatalum bulbs, bubble films. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm very diverse. Like I like as many as I can grow. It doesn't really yeah. matter which kind they are. And if I can grow them, I try. And if I can't, then, you know, I won't. I'm pretty diverse, but I yeah. specialize you in specialize like the in dendrobiums. dendrobiums. Yeah. See, it, most people do. Because I, those are my favorite. Yeah. But I, I still I've yet grow to a specialize lot of in anything. <laughs> yeah. I grow a lot of others. I stuff. like them all. Yeah. Um, but also, I think I, you know, I find myself leaning a lot towards bulbophyllums because they just look very prehistoric. Yep. You know, I really like them. But I also like, not like, I also love <laughs> Paphiopetalums. Yeah. And they do so well here. So if I, if probably if I were to get into like a specialized orchid, it, surprisingly enough, I think it would be Paphiopetal. And I, th I think like the paths have like, people are just so afraid to try a Paphiopetalum. They are intimidating because you're like, how do I take care of that? That yeah. looks like an alien. But they're they're really easy and you know, uh, if you follow proper culture. So, and like you were saying, culture is really really important. So, if you have if you start off with like Phalaenopsis, learn culture, learn light requirements for Phalaenopsis. Do they light? What kind of watering do they need? What kind of light do they need? Um, what are the best types to pot them in of media? And then you can kind of expand. That's how I started was I got a couple of fowls and I had no clue how to take care of them. And so I learned how to take care of them. And then once I bloomed them, I think I got like a couple on sidiums and I started branching out and then I was hooked. It's funny. It's usually fowls and on sidiums or mm -hmm. fowls and dendrobiums. For mm -hmm. me, it was fowls or dendrobiums. Cats. On sidiums, it was. A, I remember it was just in that order because I only got fouls. Mm -hmm. And then after after I started like learning dendrobiums, I thought I was an expert. Yeah. Oh yeah, I grow orchids. Yeah. <laughs> I would tell people, yeah, I grow orchids. Yeah. But then I as as I once I got the ranch, it was that was my turning point. Yeah. Once I had the space. Once you have space, because then you can... it's it's much it's much freer. You yeah. know, you have more more freedom to it. But I will tell you this: growing orchids in apartments, I admire people who do that i did it for a long time and and it is way harder <laughs> yeah in, a, it's in an harder. apartment it's it's because you don't have control over like uh you're typically up so you're getting more wind uh hey, your humidity sun, your sun your humidity is all crazy and whacked out and so hoxana says she she killed about three it's okay of the paps 
They donated their lives to science. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully you learned something. So we reached an hour. Yeah. We're and good. by the way, while everybody's here, make sure you go to smash Opie. that like oh, smash right. that like button. <laughs> yes. Make nice. sure you're subscribed. Go to my channel as well, The Orchid Den. Um and subscribe and like because I've got some videos in the making. Um, I'm just a little bit slower because I have two businesses in one. And um, but I love I love doing these. And I think someone said they love these educational videos, which we love doing them. They want us to do one on fungus, uh, fung fungus and pests. Okay. So that'll be a good one. Right. Maybe not the next one, but we will. But we can do very soon. Very I soon. Mean, can we? At night? Because we usually do these things late. No, we can talk about it though. Oh, okay. Yeah, and talk about curing. Because I like doing show and tell. Yeah. Like little demonstration. We are hands on. It's fun. Um, but go check us out. I think you were going to get on a tangent of the. Um, do I cut the, the foul spike or do yes. I not? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's what it was. We're back. On track. Was, we're back. <laughs> Before we close the show, we're back. <laughs> um, we're talking about how the flower spike of an orchid, see plants use pretty much energy on the whole entire plant. Like once the flower dies, the actual stem, the plant will absorb that as energy, right? Mm -hmm. From the spike. Mm -hmm. So the question was, should we cut the spikes or let them stay there so the plant does its entire, entire, <laughs> entire, entire um, process of absorbing the energy from the spike. And because Phalaenopsis, they don't always, most times and not, they don't always dry up. No, they don't. So, um, so my philosophy and my, here's, here's my opinion on this. If you have an inflorescence and the flowers drop, I always cut it back back to the plant okay. only because if you leave it and it's green it's going to be putting a lot of energy and a lot of those what what i call the highway to the inflorescence mm -hmm. is it kind of gets clogged over time and so it's going to be putting all that energy into trying to produce more while flowers it's, it's... while it's still green and oh, of okay. either uh, plant growth or root growth and so then it, it might skip something and then that's it can be that can be detrimental or if it does start producing a kiki from that inflorescence or another spike from that inflorescence you're going to have less flowers smaller flowers hmm. most of the time of course you we've seen your plant so um but the but my philosophy is i want to cut it back let it start growing new leaves new roots and then it'll go into a rest season and then spiking again. And then, so there's basically four seasons of orchid growth. There is plant growth, root growth, flower growth, and then a rest season. So think about it, four seasons that way. Wow, yeah. okay. That's good, that's a good chart to keep. Um, Jeremy. Aloha, Aloha. Jeremy. Ohio. Ohio. <laughs> My mom used to say that all the time. I don't know why. Surname. No paths and or bulbs here. Thank you, TWE. Best time to repot nobly type dendrobiums. Um, later in spring after they've done blooming. They're they finished blooming. That's when you should repot them. Um, you don't want to repot them in winter because then you're kind of disrupting their dr drier cooler months when before that's going to initiate flowering for them so you don't want to disrupt that winter kind of rest for them wait till after it's done flowering then repot it and let it grow because Hi, then Teresa. it's going to start putting out they should already start be putting out um new growths and then that new growth is going to have new roots um, here, probably like April, May. And then you're going to be in really active growth because we're not in quite spring yet. We're kind of like pre-spring, but it's been warmer here. Um, Let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. Did you see, were there any other vendors over at Ophis today or just you? 
No, there were other vendors here. Did you see like nice stuff? Maybe you can tell my viewers. I did. Give, oh, yeah. I did. Oh, you did. When uh, did you tell them? Huh? No, I, I saw. I, I did, I'm like, wait, I I've been here the whole time. No. I did see some good stuff. So, um, okay. So I thought you were, I thought you were saying, never mind. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so tired. Um, so I know Orcas 365 will be there. Uh huh. Which is tomorrow. If you guys are in Miami, by the way, at the, in the Redlands, I've already announced it, but Ophis is having, the, is it bi-weekly now that they're doing this? Um, it feels that way. No, I, I, or is it I, monthly? Think, I think there were a couple months where they did it every other, they did two in a month, but okay. from what I know, it's once a month. Okay. So Usually just, the last, almost like the second to last or the last week of the month. All right. So let's just say monthly. Yeah. So they do these monthly um, Canada, Alberta. Burr, Alberta. <laughs> I have friends. I have a lot of friends that live in Canada. And every time I go over there, the first thing they say is, how's the weather in Miami? <laughs> That's what they always ask me. Mm -hmm. But I love Canada. When I went to Canada, I, I actually told Louis, I go, I could see myself living in Vancouver. It was so beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful place and beautiful people. Oh, next I think, week. Huh. I don't know. Oh, they are doing another one next week. That's what oh, I'm really? saying. It feels it feels bi-weekly sometimes. Okay. So anyways, if you're here, I don't want to lose my, my thought process here. If you're here, join. You can go pay a visit to Josh. You're going to have your new pots here that are beautiful. Yeah, I've powder. got some of them. He always forgets to bring stuff to show here, so it doesn't matter. You know, it's a long day. <laughs> and he comes, by the way, he comes straight from putting up tents and dealing with plants and dirt and everything so he's literally in the rain here, in the rain <laughs> <laughs> after I, driving six hours after driving six hours well i almost i felt like i was driving six yeah, yeah. hours here yeah. oh, it was horrible so if you guys are down here pay them a visit they have um, they have amazing amazing vendors i know carl smith is going yep. because uh i saw some things that they were sending over to uh to ofis and i will be there on sunday I will be there filming during the day, early, early in the morning. And then after that, I will be going to Roxy's home from Orchids 365 mm -hmm. to do a home visit. So cool. I'm going to do, I'm going to. Are you uh, doing a live with her? No, or no. Are you just, just doing a recording? Just a recording. Okay. I'm doing a, a, a showcasing a, her cool. collection, which is something I want to start doing. Yeah. So get ready when I yep. go to Jacksonville. I'm ready. I'll go and I'll showcase your collection. That'll be fun. That'll be fun. I'll be wild. Yeah, because I've got a new growing area now. Yeah? Okay. You guys heard it. So It's done deal. Besides my greenhouse, I have a new growing, a whole different growing area now. Funny again. What? What's so funny? What? Is, I don't even know what I said that was funny. <laughs> oh, there were, there was some. Uh, oh, oh, New York. Yes, Thank right. you for joining us from New York. It's not detrimental to water plants when they're in bloom. It can be detrimental to fertilize plants when they're in bloom because if fertilizer gets on Ooh, that's your so flowers. Um, you know that that's one of those things that I was, I'm, I've been doing my fertilizing every week and I'm very much about just fertilizer roots. I don't like to touch the leaves. I don't feel like I need to. I get great, great results with just touching the roots. And I noticed that I, I messed up my, um, my Ingrecum Crestwood last year. Yep. I sprayed and it hit the flowers and it had spots and freckles. So whatever you guys do, please fertilize just the roots. Don't hit the, if it's yep. in bloom, if it's not in bloom, you can fertilize the whole thing. Cause I do my vendors yeah. like that. I do the whole thing, but if it's in bloom, just go to the roots. There's no need to yeah. hit the, the flower area. And, and that's why a lot of times you'll see grower, like commercial growers and stuff. They strictly use the time release fertilizer because then all they have to do is just water and they're still getting just plain water on the flowers if and they're then, in flower and but then they're still getting fertilizer oh you know what i just plant. ordered a nine gallon sprayer i'm so excited i get it next Ooh, week does it come with like a roller it comes with wheels <laughs> it comes with battery <laughs> lithium battery rechargeable and nice. i don't have to pump i don't have to yeah. do anything those it's, are the best it's lightweight those are the best the uh the battery sprayers from shanghai Wow, Shanghai. Nice. Nice. That's that's a place I would love to visit as well. I want to visit every place. I love planet Earth. <laughs> I find it so beautiful. And I love I love culture, like mm -hmm. rich cultures, you know, where you And good food. And good food. Yeah, right. Um 
Thank you guys. So make sure you smash the thumbs up button. Bing. <laughs> bing, bing, cheers. <laughs> we went over an hour. Uh, I said we we're only going to yeah. stay an hour. We're an hour and 10 minutes, so we're going to close it off. Go subscribe. Go go watch all of the your previous videos, um, our previous lives, because we've got some pretty good information. I know we get off on tangents, but I think I this think we got some really good info out there. Yeah, already. we're getting good info. And the thing is that it's like anything that starts new, guys. This is, this is only our Thanks, third Marcy. live. So yeah. as we do more of these, it's going to get better. It's going to get tighter. I mean, I was looking at my first video the other day. I said, let me see. I haven't seen it since like back then. And I decided, let me go see and, and compare the first video. If you guys do that, you'll see how funny. The first video to the latest video, it's like, <laughs> it's like it's leaps and bounds you know but everything is like that there's a process of of maturity and mm -hmm. you know this is something that's maturing and you know with time we're going to get better and faster and we're going to have more information at hand because everything is like you know we we work we have lives he doesn't even live here in miami <laughs> he yeah i'm from six hours I'm, away i'm from i'm in jacksonville <laughs> six, six hour drive away so yeah to put this together, it's it's very it could be stressful sometimes, and it could be a little bit hard on our schedule. So that's why I can never give you guys a proper time. And then technology today, which is not working with us. Yeah. So, but we're but here. We did it. Yeah. Yeah. We're here, and we can't wait to do it again. Yeah. So thank you guys again for hanging out with us. I will see you in the next live show with Josh as well. Yeah. That'll I, be the end of next month. End of next month, will you be here or will we be doing the, because we're thinking about doing split screen as well. I'll be here. You'll be here? Okay. Yeah. I'll be in a year older too. Oh, it's your birthday? Yeah. March 12th, guys. We have to get a cake. We had rum Holler cake last boy. time. What, what is it? March what? 12th. 12th. Oh, you're a Taurus. No. Wait, no, March. I'm, I always Pisces. think May. My, Pisces. Fish out of water, guys. Sorry. All right, guys. So this is the end of the segment. I am Nelson. I'm Josh from the Orchid Den. You have been watching live with Nature, Nell, and Josh. <laughs> and we're so delirious. And I will see you next time. And remember to always, always keep it green. See you next time. Bye, guys. Bye.